current situation demands that we reinforce the deterrent and defensive posture on NATO's eastern flank. President Biden has been clear that the United States will respond to the growing threat to Europe's security and stability. Our commitment to NATO, Article 5, and collective defense remains ironclad. As part of this commitment, and to be prepared for a range of contingencies, the United States will soon move additional forces to Romania, Poland, and Germany. I want to be very clear about something. These are not permanent moves. They are moves designed to respond to the current security environment. Moreover, these forces are not going to fight in Ukraine. They are going to ensure the robust defense of our NATO allies. 1,000 soldiers that are currently based in Germany will reposition to Romania in the coming days. Now, this is a, a striker squadron, a mounted cavalry unit that's designed to deploy in short order and to move quickly once in place. And they will augment the some uh, 900 U.S. forces that are currently in Romania. Now, this force is designed to deter aggression and enhance our defensive capabilities in frontline allied states. And we expect them, as I said, to move in coming days. And uh, again, I want to stress uh, that this move is coming at the express invitation of the Romanian government. Additionally, we welcome Fren French President Macron's announcement that France intends to deploy forces to Romania under NATO command which Secretary Austin discussed with the French Defense Minister, Florence Parlay, just last week. The United States will continue to consult and coordinate with France and all our allies uh, to ensure that we complement each other in our respective deployments. Uh, and of course, we're going to continue to work through NATO to make appropriate defensive and non-escalatory force posture alignments. Second, we are moving uh, an additional force of about approximately 2,000 troops from the United States to Europe in the next few days. The 82nd Airborne Division is deploying components of an infantry brigade combat team and key enablers to Poland, and the 18th Airborne Corps is moving a joint task force capable headquarters to Germany. Now, both of them, as you know, are based in Fort Bragg, North Carolina. Collectively, this force is trained and equipped for a variety of missions to deter aggression and to reassure and to defend our allies. Not surprisingly, we work very closely with our Polish and German allies to set the stage for these movements, and we absolutely appreciate their support. All of these forces are separate and in addition to the 8,500 personnel in the United States on heightened alert posture that I announced last week. Those 8,500 are not currently being deployed, but remain ready to move if called uh, for the NATO response force or as needed for other contingencies as directed by the secretary or by President Biden. Now, as the secretary said Friday, we do not know if Russia has made a final decision to further invade Ukraine, but it clearly has that capability. The Department of Defense will continue to support diplomatic efforts led by the White House and the State Department to press for resolution. We do not believe conflict is inevitable. The United States, in lockstep with our allies and partners, has offered Russia a path to de-escalate. But we will take all prudent measures to assure our own security and that of our allies. Do you have any evidence that Putin plans to move beyond Ukraine's borders? Why are you bolstering these eastern flank allies if you do not have evidence of that? Because it's important that we send a strong signal to Mr. Putin and, frankly, to the world that NATO matters to the United States. It, NATO, it matters to our allies. And we have ironclad Article 5 commitments. Uh, an attack on one is an attack on, on all. And so uh, we know that, uh, that, uh, that he also bristles uh, at NATO, uh, about NATO. Uh, and uh, he has made the, no secret of that. Um, we are making it clear uh, that we're going to be prepared to defend our NATO allies if it comes to that. Hopefully it won't come to that. Nobody wants to see, as I said, conflict's not inevitable. There's no reason for, uh, there, th for there to be armed conflict in Ukraine or anywhere else on the European continent. And Mr. Putin uh, can go a long way to, to serving that end uh, by taking seriously the proposals that we have put forward diplomatically and by de-escalating through moving some of those troops away.